Hello fellow photographers, Dan from On One here. I want to show you how to use the Quick Mask AI tool to do background replacements. This is an updated tool in PhotoRaw 2024.5. It's much more powerful. I'm going to show you three examples ranging from pretty simple to pretty complex. So let's start off here with this bird. We want to replace the boring background with something a little bit more lively. This was obviously shot very late in the day. It's very cool light. It's actually pretty noisy too. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You can see there's quite a bit of noise in this photo. So let's start off. I'm gonna add no noise to get rid of that. So I'll come down here to noise and sharpening. I'll switch over to no noise. You can see how that in one click wipes away all that noise. You know, this photo looks a little bit out of focus too, now that I've zoomed in. Rather than just using no noise, I'm going to switch over and use the both option. This is going to apply no noise for noise reduction and tack sharp to automatically remove the blur for me. There we go. That looks quite a bit better. Remember, I'm zoomed in pretty close here. And while we're here, let's brighten things up a little bit. I'm just going to go to tone and color. I'm just going to use my exposure slider and brighten the photo up a little bit. I'm going to make sure I have my levels open when I do this so that I can make sure I'm not blowing anything out. There we go. We'll bring the exposure up about a stop and I'm going to bring my blacks down. I'm going to hold the J key down so I can see where that black clipping occurs. Having that little bit of black point helps out the contrast. There we go. Now we're ready to swap out the background. The first thing I want to do is go find the new background I want to place behind it. I'm going to go to the layers palette and I'm going to click the plus button. This is going to bring up the add layer from file dialog and from here I can go pick a photo that I want. I can browse an existing photo that I was looking at on the folders tab, or I can go through all of my extras. I'm going to click on the extras tab and I'll go to the ones that we provide, the on one extras. And let's just go find a new background that we like. I'll go to the outside category. Here we go. Here's a nice bokeh image. So we'll add that to our photo. You can see it's its own layer on top. And now I'm just going to use the transform tool to scale it to fit. So we'll just press the fit button. That's going to scale it up to fit my photo. I also have the option to flip it or flop it based on my taste. That looks good. I'll hit done. And I'm just going to drag it below my bird layer in the layers palette. So now it's hidden. Now back to the bird layer, I just need to remove the old background. We're going to do that using the quick mask AI tool. So we'll go to the masking tool group and I'll select it from the overflow tool menu. Now all I do is simply click on the things that I want to keep in my photo. So there's the post or the bird, and I can pick individual parts of the bird or I can pick everything all at once. I'm just gonna pick everything all at once. If there's any little areas that are left over, I can mouse over those to include those. There's a little bit of the edge there that I wanna keep and a little bit more of the little feathers at the bottom of the bird's chin. Once I've selected what I wanna keep, I'll just go up and hit the check mark and now it masks away everything else. So if we hit the preview button down here to see if you are mask, you can see the mask that it generated for us automatically for the bird. And you see it superimposed on our new background that we put in. Now because the foreground and background are on separate layers, I can manipulate them independently like their individual photos, which is really the way they are. I could go to my background layer that I added and I could adjust it. I could use the transform tool again to move and position that around if I want to. I could also use the tools in tone and color or in effects to adjust it. Maybe I want to tweak the color a little bit. I want to warm it up more so I get a little bit more of that warm, cool dichotomy, more of a fall photo that really plays off the blue in the wings and the warmth in the background. Maybe something more like that. Let's take a look at our before and after. I'll just go to my snapshot pane and I'll create a new snapshot. This makes it easy to compare your before and afters with multi-layered photos. Then I can just toggle to the original photo and then our results. Now that's a pretty simple example. Let me show you one that's a little bit more complex. Here we have a studio shot on a neutral colored, not bright white background. This is a great way to photograph if you're planning on compositing. It reduces color bleed through on the edges and it also reduces bright halos on the edges as well. First thing I want to do is I want to crop off this soft box that was left over in the corner. So I'm just going to use the crop tool to bring it down to get rid of that corner. Now in this case what I want to do is I want to be able to blend in a new background on top of the existing background. One of the benefits in doing this is it's going to help keep the shadow 
that is cast by the lighting, and it'll also keep the sweep, kind of the shape of the background underneath their feet. It's something important when you're shooting a full length photo. So let's go find a new background that we want to use. Same thing, I'm gonna click the Add button here in the Layers pane, and let's go find a new one. Let's go to our, oh, let's go to our studio backdrops in this case, and then I'll just pick one that I like. I'll grab this one down here at the bottom. There we go, that adds in a studio background. Now you notice that it's dark at the top and bright at the bottom. That doesn't really fit our scene, so let's flip it. Using that transform tool, I'm just gonna flip it up, to, up and down, and then I'll use the fit button to scale to fit my canvas. And like I did before, I'm gonna tuck it underneath the background. We'll go back to that upper layer, and we're gonna use the same Quick Mask AI tool. You notice as I mouse around the photo, I can pick different components from her legs or her shorts or her entire body. That's what I want. I'm gonna pick the entire body and hit the OK button, and that'll mask out everything on the background. Now, we've done this, we've removed it completely. It doesn't look very realistic because we've lost the shadow, we've lost the shape of the sweep. The trick is we wanna blend the two together. To blend those two together, we're just going to reduce the opacity of the mask. If we look at the mask in the mask preview mode, you can see it's pretty much just white and black. What I really wanna do is make that black a gray. And the way we do that is we go to our masking properties. We go to the density slider and we bring that down. You can see how I can now blend in the texture and color of that new background while maintaining the shadow and the sweep nature of the underlying background. So I just dial in the amount that looks good to me, probably around 60, 70%, and we can futz with that later. Now that looks a bit more realistic. Now again, because the foreground and background are separate from each other, I can manipulate the background independently. Let's say I want to tint that background color. I can just go to the background and I can now use any of the tools that I'm used to using. I'm just gonna roll up masking here. Let's go over to effects and we're gonna add a photo filter. With photo filter, I can pretty easily change the color of that background. Let's say I'm looking for something that's in the same hue value range as her shorts are. So I can now shift that background until I get something that is closer in the value of her shorts that she's wearing. Now that we've done that, we've shifted the hue more, it's easier to see where there's an edge in the original mask. This is where we might need to do a little bit of cleanup depending. This is really caused by a difference in the brightness between the original and the background photo. and can be exacerbated if there's a strong color difference as well. If the original background had a color to it, you'll have a colored edge to it. I'll show you how to remove that. I want to make sure that I'm on the foreground layer. I'm going to go to the masking tools and I'm going to use one of two different tools. I'm going to use either the chisel tool or the refine tool. I'm going to use the chisel tool for this photo. And what the chisel tool does is it just moves the mask edge in or out a little bit. So I'm going to select that tool, make sure it's set to remove, and then I can simply brush along the edge to remove that halo. Or if you want to cheat, just simply double click on the tool icon. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this in action better. So you see it right here along the edge, there's that little bit of a halo left by the changing of the background. I'll just double click on the chisel tool and you'll see how it shaved that off a little bit. I can do it again if I need to continue to make it smaller and smaller. So I can do that a few times until it removes that edge. That works great on the hard edged areas, but when we get into things like hair, that's where we wanna use the refine brush instead. So I'll just grab the refine brush, and then I simply brush it through the hair to remove anything in the hair. And this is also the same tool you'd use for tree branches as well. So there's a more complicated background swap where we blended in another background on top of the existing gray studio background to give it a little bit more oomph and I'm able to change the color to fit the scene a little bit better so it matches her hair and her shorts a bit more. Let me show you a variation on this that's even more advanced. Here we have a photo shot on a very bright colored background. This is not an ideal photo for doing background replacement. The problem when you photograph on a bright colored background is you're actually reflecting that color onto your subject. You can see she's wearing this metallic neck piece and you can see there's quite a bit of blue color reflected into that. And even along the edges of her skin, it's actually going to reflect some of that blue. So it's gonna be not just a masking operation, but we're also gonna do some local color adjustments to fix this as well. But the process is essentially the same. First thing I want to do is I'm going to lower my exposure a little bit. This feels like it was a little hot for my taste. 
There we go. Let's go find us a new background. I'll put the plus button and we'll grab a new background. Well, let's just use this one right here. There we go. Transform tool. Press the scale button. Press the fit button to scale it up. I might make this just a little bit bigger as well. There we go. And tuck it below our foreground. Now, same steps as before. We'll go back to our foreground layer and we're just going to use Quick Mask AI to remove the background. Now I could go through and I could select the subject or I could just simply select the background as well. In this case, I'm just going to click on the background and rather than using the paint option, I'll use the erase option and hit done. And this will mask out the background for me. All right, so now that I've swapped out the background, there's a few things I need to clean up. First, you'll notice we still have a lot of blue left over in the silver neck piece. We'll use the refine brush to clean that up. Now we can't use that on the inside of the neck piece because it actually should be completely opaque. So in areas where we need to selectively change the color, instead, we'll use a local adjustment. So I'll come down here, I'll select a local adjustment, we'll add it. And what I want to do in this case is I just want to reduce the saturation. So I can use the saturation slider, I'm going to bring it down. I'll use my paintbrush, I'm going to set my feather to 100, my opacity down something low like 30. And now I can just paint that in those blue areas to help remove the blue color cast. Then in the areas along her skin, where the little bit of hair along the edge of her body was picking up the blue cast from the background, we'll do the same thing, but instead we'll paint with a flesh color. So I'm gonna add another local adjustment, go down to the paint with color option, use the dropper and pick the color from her skin. Make sure that the paint mode is set to replace color and then repeat the same process. Now we're just gonna paint along the edge and what it's doing is it's painting away that blue color and painting in the color of her skin without actually changing any of the luminosity in the skin. So it keeps it looking like a natural edge, but has it now the correct color. And again, if this was photographed on a gray background rather than a blue background, we wouldn't have that problem. This isn't a masking issue, it's a color reflectance issue. There we go. Let's take a look at our before and our after here. There's our original and our results after that background swap. All right, there you go. There's how you can use the improved Quick Mask AI tool to do background replacements and composites in On One Photo Raw 2024.5. We think you're gonna love these improvements. It's a much stronger tool and can really make you make the most complex selections a lot faster. There you go, thanks for watching.